Hello and welcome to Kaylee's Workshop. Today we are working on roller bearings for Lego trains. Now I don't know how well you can see this, probably not very well, but inside this bogey, yes you see the bearings, behind the bearings you might see bits of red Technic axle. So just to be clear, this video is not for the faint of hearts. It does involve modifying Lego parts. Uh, that's what it takes to make roller bearings work. So if you're not into that, that's okay. This video is not for you. So these bearings, I've already made these ones. I've done a batch of 50 axles so far. I've got another 50 to go. So these are genuine Lego housings. They are not genuine Lego wheels. These wheels came from brick tracks. And so did the axles. Now, I actually prefer these to genuine Lego axles. Uh, genuine Lego axles, here's a genuine one, is ever so slightly thicker by a fraction of a millimetre. You can't see it. You measure it if you have accurate enough equipment. Micrometer will definitely do it. But um, with the Bricks Tracks axles, you can hand press the bearings. You don't need any special equipment. You can just fiddle them on by hand, measure them up, slot them in. It's great. The Lego axles are more involved. You'll need some sort of press. Uh, the video I s saw on how to do this, which I will not link, he hammered the bearings in. That's a great way to destroy bearings. Have a look how tiny these are. Are tiny. These bearings, for your information, I got them off eBay in a pack of a hundred, and they were described as MR52ZZ or MR522Z, two times five times two and a half millimeter metal shielded ball bearing. Uh, I'll post all the info in the description, or I'll put up a pinned up notice. So what we're going to do? We, I've already fitted all these. These are fantastic. I'm not taking them apart. Uh, they'll probably come apart in about three or four years when they've picked up enough carpet fluff. But until then, they're staying as they are. So we're going to take a Lego one apart. We're going to use my makeshift arbor press, which is really a drill press, to fit the bearings on. And we're going to assemble a new axle. Oh, and we're going to chop up a in old Technic axle. Now I like using the little red ones for a couple of reasons. Firstly, I find them to be not aesthetically pleasing. Your mileage may vary. You're welcome to your opinion. I'm welcome to mine. But I also like them inside these housings because it's easier to see a red thing. Well, this lighting is not fantastic. In daytime, it's easier to see that there is actually a red axle there and what's going on. Unfortunately, it's not daytime. You'll have to take my word for that. This is how to chop up a Technic Axle. We're going to turn one of these, a two-length, into four half-length axles. Now, be very careful with these clippers. They have a lot of spring force. They will absolutely chop your finger off if your fingers happen to be in the middle of the blade when it snaps. Please don't do that. Please be very careful for your safety. I like my fingers. I'm going to keep my fingers. I would hope everyone else does so as well. So this part is going to go springing off with extreme velocity if allowed to do so. So I'm going to press it against my cutting mat. I don't care if I cut my cutting mat. That's what they're for. I'm holding the axle, but I'm holding it far away from the cutting blade. So... If these axles end up a little bit too long, they will not fit in the wheel housing. If that happens, you will need a file to file them down. You've already modified a Lego brick. What's a file between friends? I won't be demoing that tonight. Just demoing the basic process. That one went flying, but not too far. And the last snip, well, we've got a one length axle now. Very difficult to grab safely. In fact, I'm going to use my new method of safety. So the bottom one's going to flick, so I'll put that against the mat. The top one's going to flick, so I'm going to use the cup 
of my pliers to catch it. I'm not opening the pliers, I'm just holding it there as a cup. So when I go ping, there we go. Now, yeah, that's a bit long. I'll have to file that down. I'm going to do that later. That filing is an easy process. That's not really what this video is about. I will keep the pliers close by. So now, I need to take the old axle apart. That's easy enough. Pop, out it comes. That one there is a genuine Lego axle and wheels. Um, so now I'll grab my pliers and out of my pile of axle bits, grab two smallest ones I can and they go in the two. Can I turn the flash on for better lighting? Apparently I can not, so I do apologize for lighting. See if that helps a bit. It does. So I will that's that's horrible. I'm just gonna put the camera. There. So I'm gonna pop this axle lengthwise in the two center slots. Oh, it'd be nice if you focused. Don't know why it won't focus. We'll make it focus somehow. There we go. So again, we're gonna pop a axle bit in the two innermost slots. I'm not using the two outermost slots. You probably could. The video I learnt from did the two center ones, so that's what I'm doing. So just pop that in. The small ones will just pop in. Larger ones will argue. Sometimes you'll have to squeeze them in. There, yeah, that one I've got to squeeze in. That's okay. That's normal. And Get them to line up so the gap in the cross is central. You basically want it to be a times inside that cavity, not a plus. And now it doesn't want to focus. We'll get there. All right, so they're pressed down as well as I can. Now is time to fix the axle. Let's see. Here's one from earlier. Two bearings, one axle, over to the press. It's always interesting operating a camera and equipment at the same time. So this block of timber I have prepared before this video. This is what I did most of my pressing on. That axle hole is approximately 12 millimeters deep. You'll notice it's a bit of a dimple, so it's a little bit less now. So I've had to re-drill that. Um, if you're going to do this method with the Lego axles, make that about 13 mil deep. Yes, it matters. So we're just going to put that bearing on the axle like that. Uh, like I said, genuine Lego axle, you probably won't be able to just push it on yourself. So I'm going to try and stand that up. And press the axle nice and gentle. Again, please don't hammer the bearings. It doesn't save time. All right. Next bearing. Axle all the way around. Thankfully this one seems to be a little bit skinnier, so it is agreeing with me. Like I said, the brick tracks axles you can fit by hand. There we go. So it should look roughly like that. And if I place it right, you'll see that the distance between the end of the axle and the bearing. That's approximately 12 to 13 millimeter. That's approximately the width of my little finger. Back to the workbench. <laughs> Alrighty. So, we've got our axle housing with the pre fitted. Axle, Technic Axle bits. We now have a Lego axle with two bearings and two wheels. Doing a last visual check, making sure everything lines up in the middle. Making sure I'm not going to hit the stand up bits. And then you need to really push down. Sometimes the axles are 
a bit mis the Technic axles are a bit misshapen. Pressing down firmly but gently on the bearings is acceptable. Hammering is not. And if it's all come together and if it's sitting in the middle, it should free spin. There we go. That's not too bad. I won't say that's my best work, but it's not bad. Again, I do recommend the brick track wheels. That's a nice spin. Compare that to one of my old genuine Lego bogies. That's not a bad spin, but you can do better. So, with all that said and done, we're going to go out to the test track where I've already done a few carriages and show you how effective this is. I've set up a test track, just as many straights as I could find in storage. This is my starting ramp, which is approximately five, six studs high. Six? No, that's eight plates high. So here is one of my club cars. I've fitted it with roller bearings, again, Bricks Trex wheels. There's no problem with doing old Lego axles. You give them a lot more life. But if you can get your hands on the bricks tracks, you will save yourself a surface in the future. Or if you've got really long trains. Now, I'm just winding this up to the top of the hill and then I'm going to gently let it go and watch it roll. Hmm. Last roll I did went twice as far. So, I'm going to do that again. That was a poor demo. Not even close. Doesn't matter. Try that again. And that's one of the longest demo rolls I've done. So, yeah, results do vary. But you can see, there's a good roll on that. Now, this is not a club car, so it should be a lighter carriage. Standard Lego axles. And I'll do a couple of rolls, just to be fair. But, quite frankly, it doesn't roll anywhere near as good. It's not terrible. It's not terrible. But it consistently rolls about that far. So, approximately half as far as the roller bearing. So that's fairly consistent with halfway through my kitchen. Yeah, call that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Call that a meter thirty versus nearly three meters for a single car, just on a little gradual slope. So you think, okay, it's an extra meter roll. So what? Give it a little bit of a push. It keeps going for ages. Put an engine behind it. The engine works a lot less and we'll go faster for it. So I do strongly recommend the upgrade to roller bearings. You will get better life out of your trains. You will get longer life out of your motors, be they power functions or nine volts. It's definitely worth the upgrade. I've done 50 axles so far. I've upgraded two passenger trains. One more is awaiting the next set of roller bearings. And then quite frankly, I'm going to order more third party wheels and do it all again. So thank you for your time. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Hope you found it informative and useful. Have fun everyone.